stores sell plastic containers that might have 20 lotus leaves. They're totally dry, they're folded into quarters. He brings them home, opens them up, soaks them in water, so rehydrates them. And then once they come out of the water, he also puts uh, shellac on them because hmm. that gives them a little more strength. Hmm. He inks that, and it, the lotus leaf itself becomes the plate. So it's inked, it's moved onto the plate. Isn't it too fragile? Would it tear apart? It, or? it is a one only. It does tear apart as part of the printing process. And sometimes... So this one here is one leaf. One leaf. And the orange one and the green one I just, uh, we held up before, hmm. two other leaves. Because once you've done it once... Um, it you, probably breaks you, apart. It breaks apart. Uh, and sometimes the print comes out wrong because it breaks apart too early and you get a bad print. But um, So there's a lot of trial and error. And so what kind of paper is this on, do you know? Or uh, you know, that I can't... Black, black, black paper. paper. <laughs> black, heavy paper. Right. Uh -huh. And that's all one color looks like. Uh -huh. It's a white uh, uh, shade. It has to be really white because it would be totally gray if it were a lighter color. Wow. Wow. How long has he been doing the leaf thing? About a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. So he and a sculptor friend came upon these packets. The sculptor literally did metal lotus leaves inspired by this two dollar packet and Robert went the printing press way and created these pieces. <laughs> wow. I knew he was a painter, but I didn't realize he was a printmaker. We, we moved here from New York seven and a half years ago, and he was a painter. Hmm. And since we've lived here, he can add sculptor and uh, uh, printing, printmaking to the credentials. He must have got curious about it at some point to try to do it. I mean, yeah, Robert has always been any place we've lived. He's he's always found the best art school uh, in town, hmm. taking classes, always wanting to try something new. Wow. Even at his age, he's still curious and uh, willing to risk failure. Because usually, when you start new things, oh, yeah. you make mistakes, and yeah. uh, then that's part of the process. So, this one, that one, but this is an etching, isn't it? That nope. looks no. This that's is, the same thing. This is more of the tape. Really. Without the drips. Without the drips. Yeah. So the drips came a little. These are these are some of the first ones where he when he started experimenting with the tape. Oh, and so this is ink. That's not a drawing. That's right. That's ink. That's right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So in this case, the ink is the gray or white looking, and in this case, it's the black color. Huh. And that's tape, you said. I yeah. mean, he yeah. inked tape. Yeah. He, he inked a plate that was this shape and did the tape and then inked the whole plate, did the wipe off. And of course it's just one yeah. of it. Yeah, he, well, one time, although if it's, uh, unlike the lotus where you do sacrifice, this, you can ink, re-ink, he could re-ink in a different color and do it on yeah. white paper and green, white paper and red. And so you're saying the tape doesn't break apart quite like the leaf breaks, breaks apart. It breaks apart, what he's found is that about eight to ten um, prints the tape starts to break apart a lot. Aha! An artist's secret. Something he discovered. <laughs> That's right. Good. Neat. Thank you. And you are? Mary Quackbush. Okay.